Progressives are demanding a mistrial in the Kyle Rittenhouse case because the judge's phone rang and it played the song God Bless the USA. And that may be the clearest sign that this country is screwed and we are heading in a dark place. And I believe the uh, uh, dissolution of this country is inevitable. I know it's kind of a big leap from judge's phone plays ringtone to the end is nigh. But let me explain. The judge is a boomer. I believe he's in his 70s. He has been fair. He has been reasonable. He has not given the defense everything they've wanted. He's criticized the prosecution for very obvious and egregious violations. And any fair person who believes in our legal system and the American system of governance would agree that the judge is actually being quite fair. In fact, on one of the questions pertaining to Kyle Rittenhouse's guilt, the possession of a firearm, I actually believe the judge is being unfair. But I think this shows that the judge is not biased in favor of anybody. The question is, as it pertains to the gun charge, there is an exception uh, uh, in the statute, uh, uh, a section of the law, uh, 3C, which states that there is an exception if an individual is not in compliance with certain uh, other statutes. To simplify, the basic language of the gun charge Kyle Rittenhouse faces is possession of a dangerous weapon by someone under the age of 18. On the surface, if the judge just hands that off to the jury, the jury will say, clear cut, Kyle Rittenhouse shouldn't have had a gun. But there's a question of law the judge is supposed to answer. And it pertains to exceptions which state something having to do with being under the age of 16. To put it simply, I I can't tell you exactly what the law is trying to say. And even some legal analysts that I've been reading can't tell you exactly what the law is trying to say, just that the judge needs to determine if these exceptions, the exemptions apply to Kyle Rittenhouse before just handing it off to the jury. To put it simply, it doesn't seem he's doing that, in which case I actually think he's being rather unfair. The full law and all of its statutes should be read to the jury, not just the basic first language, the, the simple answer. But Kyle Rittenhouse may end up getting uh, getting convicted on that misdemeanor charge, and I think it shows the judge is not trying to help the defense. That being said, progressives are claiming that simply because his phone rang and the song God Bless the USA played, he's clearly biased. They're saying that from the get-go, we've known he's been biased. Why? Well, he won't let the prosecutors refer to those who got shot as victims. And why won't he do that? Well, according to progressives who want this mistrial, it's because he's biased. People are tweeting things like, oh, the judge is clearly acting as the defense attorney for Kyle Rittenhouse. But let me explain something very simple to anybody who understands what what happened here. Everyone knows Kyle Rittenhouse shot and killed two people and shot a third person. That is not up for debate. That is not at question in this trial. If it were then perhaps you could refer to these individuals as the alleged victims. What's at question in this trial is whether or not these people were victims. The reason the judge said you can't call these three individuals victims is because we're trying to determine who was the perpetrator. If Kyle Rittenhouse was the perpetrator as determined by the jury, then these people are victims. If Kyle Rittenhouse is the victim, then these people were the perpetrators. That is what the jury is deciding. To put it very simply, the left wants the judge to rule before the trial even started that Kyle Rittenhouse is guilty and has no self-defense claim. It's nonsensical arguments meant to just be tribalist. And it's reflected in a lot of the comments from some of these leftist pundits. One video, someone point uh, shows a clip where uh, the prosecutor asks of Kyle Rittenhouse, Gage Grosskreutz is a guy, one of the criminals who attacked Kyle Rittenhouse. And I'll be overt and just say it. Kyle Rittenhouse is on the ground. Gage Grosskreutz, with no knowledge of why or what happened, has already drawn his pistol and is advancing on Kyle Rittenhouse. One leftist pundit that isn't following said this proves Kyle Rittenhouse is guilty because the state said you are pointing your weapon at him and his hands are up. He has a pistol. You have a rifle. How is it that he is a threat to you, but you are not a threat to him, which is completely irrelevant and immaterial to the question at hand. Rittenhouse responds, I had been attacked by several people and he ran at me with a gun. The issue is further in the testimony, Rittenhouse clarifies the image you're displaying that shows. So so they showed an image of Kyle Rittenhouse and the gun is aimed at the legs of Gage Grosskreutz. He's the guy who got shot in the arm. Rittenhouse says this is a still frame. 
If you actually play the video, you'll see I'm lowering my weapon. And that is a fact. You see, what happens is you have people who don't follow the trial and are just looking for any excuse. And this says to me, this country is absolutely effed. The judge is a boomer. You know what that means? I think one of the main reasons the culture war has been escalating so dramatically over the past several years is not because more and more people are joining the fray. It's because millennials hold these views. They don't believe in this country. They don't believe in our system of laws for the most part. Not not every millennial. Obviously, I'm a millennial. I'm saying a large portion. The ideological split among millennials is massive. So what's happened? Back in the early 2010s with the rise of Gamergate, you had interns, individuals just getting their first job at news organizations, at blogs, writing culture war issues. And what did they talk about? They talked about video games. Over the past 10 years, these individuals went from being entry level hires to mid level managers to editors in chief. I mean, now we're talking about people who went, they were 22 writing about culture war issues, and now they're 32. These people run departments now. These people are becoming prosecutors. These people are becoming lawyers. So what happens? The ideology among millennials is is not that every millennial is an extremist. It's that millennials are absolutely split far away from each other and probably due to the internet and social media. What's holding the country together right now is Gen X and boomers with all their problems, mind you. There are problems among those generations as well. But boomers, for the most part, if you look back at Pew Research and you look at where uh, uh, people were politically, boomers overlapped politically, Democrat and conservative in the 90s to a great degree. Gen Xers who were coming of age basically in the early 90s, eventually start taking over in the 2000s and still very much agree with each other. That's why Howard Stern was making racial, was saying racial slurs and everyone thought it was funny. They all basically agreed enough that it was mainstream acceptable for Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, I believe Fallon, Sarah Silverman, Howard Stern to do something like blackface. Among millennials, you have the the, the following generation. These are people who understand uh, um, edgy humor and offensive comedy. They like Dave Chappelle. And then you have the other sect of millennials that are the cult. These are people who are ideologically driven, who will lie, cheat and steal, who don't believe in authority, who don't believe in the the, the United States, who think the country is evil and want to watch it burn. Gage Grosskreutz, for instance, was at a rally where he held his fist up and said, long live the revolution. He does not care for the authority of the courts. He doesn't believe in the authority of the courts. And he has publicly expressed his desire to remove the authority from the courts. So, of course, when he goes in and testifies, it will be in bad faith. The prosecutor is the exact same way. So what you need to understand, that prosecutor will become a judge. In the Kyle Rittenhouse case, the prosecutor who questioned Kyle Rittenhouse for remaining silent, to, it, it was so shocking to anybody who cares about our legal system that the, even the judge yelled, I was astonished that you would question the, the defendant's pretrial silence. It is a matter of basic law for 40, 50 years. And this judge is in his 70s. So perhaps his ringtone is God bless the USA. And I'm proud to be an American. You know the song. Donald Trump plays it at his rallies. The left is saying that's cause for a a mistrial, meaning the judge should be recused. There should be an entirely new trial because the judge is biased. And you know what? Well, not completely wrong about the judge being biased. I think this ringtone proves the judge will be biased in favor of the left. And this is our Achilles heel, and it is the weakness of this country. The left likes to show you that Karl Popper meme, which is grossly out of context, by the way. But for those not familiar, it's called the paradox of intolerance. In this comic, Karl Popper as a little cartoon figure mentions that if you tolerate intolerance, the intolerant win and tolerance gets destroyed. To put it simply, they use Nazis as an example. They say that if a Nazi comes out and expresses a desire for authoritarianism and a civil society says we must protect free speech and let them speak, over time, the intolerant will gain more power, silence those who oppose them, and in the end, all that will be left are the intolerant. That's not completely wrong. 
The issue we are facing right now, this judge believes in the American legal system. The American legal system affords the right to a fair trial, the powers of the state and the defense. Typically, we err on the side of the of the of the defendants, but in many ways, the state gets their advantages as well. The state has committed gross prosecutorial misconduct. The judge himself said you have engaged in grave constitutional violations, and yet he allows the trial to persist. Therein lies the problem. A man who believes in America, and I absolutely respect that because I do too, who's in his 70s, who says, God bless the USA. He wants to show that trials work and they're fair. The problem is, it doesn't matter if the jury finds Kyle Rittenhouse not guilty. The left has made up their mind and they lie. Take a look at this from Richard Ojeda. This is the guy that we, we actually all championed because he was like a moderate Democrat from West Virginia. And we were like, this is the kind of guy, you know, a regular working class guy. And look what he does. The evil, the depravity or the sheer ignorance. Richard Ojeda tweeted, well, well, well. The bombshell video shows Rittenhouse chasing Rosenbaum while wielding an assault rifle, not the other way around, as the suspect's legal team has claimed. Overtly fake. Now, I don't know where it came from. In the absence of evidence, the, the simple the, the, the solution that makes the least amount of assumptions tend to be the, tends to be the correct one. I think it's fair to say Richard Ojeda just saw this post somewhere and reposted it. I don't think he made it because I don't think he has the wherewithal to produce something like this. But I can't make assumptions. All I can say is Richard Ojeda has posted completely false information. There is no video showing Rittenhouse chasing anybody. There is clear cut evidence, witness testimony, video testimony, and acknowledgement by the state that Rosenbaum was chasing Kyle Rittenhouse. But this post has 4,373 retweets, and everyone who follows Richard Ojeda believes it. So the judge, somebody who believes in a fair trial, has the ability, and perhaps he will, to say mistrial with prejudice because the state broke our sacred rules and our constitutional rights. And if he really did believe in America, he would say, I will not allow a prosecution to persist that violates the Constitution. Instead, so far, what we've gotten is, if you do it one more time, because the judge is a, a good judge, and he believes in this country. And that means for the sake of the public and for what this, what this case represents, he wants the jury to issue their findings. That means that even though the prosecutor has committed grave constitutional violations, the judge will not intervene. Maybe he will. In the, in the end, maybe he'll say the state has overstepped on numerous occasions, violating my rulings. And in this country, if you do not get a fair trial, then you cannot prosecute, persecute this individual. That would be the most American thing, in my opinion. But the judge is concerned about the shape of this nation. At least that's my perspective of him. And that's why he said, I'll take the motion to dismiss. They, 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 uh, uh, the, the defense said we want a mistrial with prejudice meaning they can't retry Kyle Rittenhouse after the fact. The judge said, I'll take it under advisement. Perhaps the defense will come forward with a, a formal uh, uh, motion. But I think there is, even among the defense, a desire to have a jury acquit Kyle Rittenhouse. I think that's what they hope will be the cleanest out for him. And they think they're looking at an innocence verdict, meaning they're, they're looking at not guilty on all counts. Across the board, the defense is quite happy with this. But a mistrial with prejudice throws everything out. And that means even the gun charge, and he can't be tried again for any of these, of, of, these, of these charges. Now, why I think this country is going to fall apart, as I stated earlier, when you have the left, people like Richard Ojeda, West Virginia Democrat, West Virginia, I live in West Virginia, it's shocking to me, willing to lie overtly for power. They don't care to look at the trial. They don't care to follow the facts. Richard Ojeda, in my opinion, his only goal, and the reason why this is either ignorance or depravity, is, is if he truly cared about the shape of this nation and the, and the lives of these individuals and, and, and justice, he'd actually watch some of that trial. He'd actually Google search that video and try to see if it's true. Richard Ojeda doesn't care about that. All he cares about is pursuing the narrative, pursuing power. When this judge leaves... And people like ADA Binger or Krauss, truly depraved individuals, become judges. And they likely will. They will act politically. 
and ideologically. Now, I don't think these, I think these guys are, are Xennials. They're likely Gen X. They're a little bit older. I don't think they're millennial. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think they're a little bit older. As these people continue to gain power, as, uh, for instance, George Soros provided a lot of funding for district attorneys, Jussie Smollett, for instance, we know that story. I don't think people realize how generational power works. Why is it that certain things were different in the 90s and the 2000s and today? Because older people age out, younger people age in. Millennials are split between the psychotic ideological communist and race left and more libertarian. I don't believe there are many, there, there are many conservative millennials. I believe it is a very, very small amount. I believe for the most part you have libertarians and then you have the cult. There are the, when it comes to the QAnon people and Donald Trump's cult, the people, the diehard supporters, they're all fairly older. Millennials tend to be freedom oriented or absolutely cult authoritarian. I saw a meme from um, existentialist comics and they said, Capitalism began in the 16th century, and the capitalists went on to commit genocides and enslave people. We're told communism is bad because of a famine. And that's the kind of dangerous and psychotic ideology that is prevalent among the cult. Communism and capitalism have their problems. Both of them do. Any honest person can tell you that an ideology taken to its extreme end will be very, very bad. The selling of people. Now, you'll get a lot of modern capitalists saying that slavery is not a free market because you're literally enslaving people, but that's neither here nor there. Taken to its logical extreme, people of power and means will do corrupt things. That's why all ideologies can lead to dark places. We're told communism is bad, not because of a famine, because of a forced famine, because the Soviets committed the Holodomor, because they were stealing the food from Ukrainians they deemed to be genetic lessers. It is psychotic. Communists seize the, the, the means of production from those capable of, of producing and give it to people without the skills, resulting in famines. The Soviet Union invaded many countries. They invaded Poland. They killed many hundreds of million, hundred plus million people. It's all bad. Authoritarianism and ideological extremism are bad. Decentralization is what protects our rights. So what is going to happen when cult members and uh, to put it simply, people who are uninterested in facts and reason, what happens when they inherit the reins of power because they seek it? And when liberty minded people say, I don't want to be the boss and I don't want to be the president, you can damn well expect that in the next 10 to 15 years, we will have an authoritarian regime in this country. It's already starting to happen. This judge has done things I think are unfair, but I think for the most part, he is unbiased because if he was biased, he'd actually say the gun charge is out because of the exceptions. As a matter of law, he would have issued a directed verdict as soon as they said Gage Grosskreutz, as soon as Gage Grosskreutz admitted he pointed a gun at Kyle Rittenhouse. The judge could say you have charged this man Rittenhouse with intentional homicide. That is to say he went to this event seeking to cause death. He yelled friendly and ran away. And it was only after his gun was grabbed. It was only after he was hit in the head with a skateboard twice. And it was only after a man pointed a gun at him that he fire in self-defense. The judge, as a matter of law, could say it's not an issue for the jury. The law clearly states it's not intentional homicide. And he could he could dismiss he could he could issue a directed verdict on those counts. He's not doing it because this is perhaps one of the problems with boomers. He believes in fairness and I respect it. He wants the jury system to play its course to show that a jury can decide. And maybe he'll intervene. I don't know. But this is one of the problems we have with the older generation that allows the cult and the communists and the Marxists, the extremists and whatever you want to call them to gain more and more power and eventually destroy the system itself. Gage Grosskreutz is suing the, uh, the, the, the government. It's either the police department or the, or the city. He's, he's, got a, he's got a $10 million lawsuit. If Kyle Rittenhouse is convicted, he's going to win that lawsuit. They'll settle. If Kyle Rittenhouse is acquitted, he is a perpetrator and he will get nothing. In fact, Gage Grosskreutz should have been criminally charged for illegal possession of a concealed firearm and for attacking Kyle Rittenhouse. He wasn't. These people are corrupt. They go on the stand and they lie. And I will say as a statement of fact, 
Gage Grosskreutz lied on the stand several times. And the prosecution had to call out the lies, most egregious of which was when the prosecution played a video showing Gage Grosskreutz with a pistol in his hand. And he said, so at this point, you've drawn your pistol. And Grosskreutz goes, no. And the video was right there in front of the jury. And the prosecutor says, in the video, you're holding a gun. And Grosskreutz goes, yes. He was not being honest, not acting in good faith. Why? Gage Grosskreutz is a revolutionary who hates America. And I think it's maybe cliche to say, but no, no, no. He actually said with his fist in the air at a rally, long live the revolution. We as Americans, we tolerate fair trials for people who are crimp, who are who hate the system and want to tear it down. Last night, Jack Murphy asked me, do you think that the, the 9-11 terrorists should have been given a fair trial? And I said, yes, absolutely. Why? Because the prosecutors and the defense both believe in our legal system. The problem we're facing now is that our judge, who is a good, who, this judge here in the case, seems to be a good man, is giving the benefit of the doubt to a prosecutor, a prosecutor who does not believe in our system of governance, who violated the constitutional rights in front of everybody, of Kyle Rittenhouse, and even the judge acknowledged it, who entered into evidence what the judge had already deemed inadmissible. He does not care for our system. He seeks only power. If you have a legal system that respects our our way of life and our laws and our judicial system, then we give a fair trial to everybody. But when you have a prosecutor who is politically aligned with the cult seeking only to win, the system is collapsing. And I'll tell you this, the system has been collapsing for a long time. Long have we had a legal system in which prosecutors don't care to actually seek justice. They're supposed to, but they don't. And I've experienced it myself. We have only a system of churn and burn. Bring them in, plead them guilty, get the F out of my courtroom. There's too many people. There's too many cases. There's too many crimes. There's too many laws. And prosecutors just don't care anymore. So a good judge can only last so long. This judge will eventually retire and soon. And people like Binger will become the judge. And then he'll say, I don't care about what is true, correct, and fair. I care about my political ideology and my feelings. So my prediction is within the next 10 years, as millennials become judges, become senators, become members of Congress, and they are, they will seek to burn and destroy. I'll tell you this, even if strong-minded, freedom-loving individuals like you or I were to run for office, the fact remains that millennials are so far apart politically that eventually there will be right-leaning millennials and left-leaning millennials in Congress, and they will be so at odds with each other, a caning will occur. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Gen Z steps in and tells all the millennials to shut up because you're dumb. But I'm not convinced. Because Gen Z, while to a certain degree is is more conservative than millennials, that's only because conservative Gen Xers had children. That's it. Millennial, it's it's hard to predict exactly what will happen in the future, but I'll, I'll put it simply. The math, in my opinion, shows that as millennials age into power and take the reins from these institutions, they will burn them to the ground. So we'll see. We'll see what the judge rules if there'll be a mistrial. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.